Hi everyone, Shat back in with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Fiverr, the online freelancing platform, arguably the biggest name in this space along with Upwork. Fiverr is down now 74% from its February 2021 highs. This was once a $300 stock. It's now $83 as I speak. Company's still up around 165% since its 2019 IPO and it's grown at a fantastic rate. Is this company a buy, sell or hold today? That's what I'm going to be asking in this video. So looking at the investment case, this is straight from the horse's mouth. This is how Pfizer sees its own investment case. I think it's fairly spot on. First, first and foremost, huge total addressable market with extremely low online penetration for the freelancer market. Freelancer market is valued near a trillion dollars, absolutely huge, and the majority still happens offline. Less than 10% is online. Unique platform style makes it appear like a normal e-commerce site, very natural. No pitching or negotiations like Upwork, so very popular from the seller side. Strong business model, high take rates, potentially excellent margins, and potential for a really expanding network effect that'll be a powerful moat and of course as scale advantages with that network effect as well as margin and operating leverage i think it's important to make the distinction that fiverr is not just an e-commerce business it's a technology company they continue to spend a healthy amount on r&d and use this to add to the fiverr experience and improve the business since, since 2016 they've added all sorts of things fiverr business promoted gigs subscriptions seller plus milestones fiverr's choice fiverr pro tons and tons of content and value add in a very relatively short period of time this is still a very young company i think it was founded in 2010 so 11 11 years old 12 years old incredibly young company doing an incredible amount of r d and, and innovation fiverr is of course a two-sided network they must provide a strong value proposition to both buyers and sellers and i think they do a good job of this net promoter score is essentially how likely you are to recommend it to a friend a net promoter score on the buyer side of 67 is a pretty strong score, indicating that buyers like the Fiverr, sell, the Fiverr buyer platform. An NPS on the seller side of 81 is absolutely outstanding, showing that the sellers absolutely love the Fiverr seller platform. Easy to see why when compared with the bid and negotiation aspect of Upwork, this is a much better option in terms of less competition. These are really, really bullish numbers in my opinion. Key to the Fiverr story is keeping sellers and buyers on board and building a strong network to create a network effect and keep people on the platform. The nature of this business is reflected in Fiverr's in revenue model. They gain a large amount of customers. Some will leave, some will stay. That is just the nature of the freelancing business. Some people come on for one, one thing. Some people come on for many, many things over time. Those that stay spend more and more on the platform, and this is panned out over time with 55% of revenue coming from existing customers. I think this speaks volumes on the power of Fiverr's platform and the company's excellent retention of those customers and growing them well. Over time, this will become a real boom for Fiverr, as especially with things like Fiverr Business, if they can get a lot of businesses on board using Fiverr rather than just individual players. This could be a real, real source of consistent quarter over quarter regular revenue. As I mentioned, Fiverr is just over 10 years old, still very much in the customer acquisition phase. This is a massive market with very little share captured. So it's we're looking at the revenue numbers. Quarter over quarter, quarter numbers most recently were a bit shaky, slightly, slightly down, but 42% year over year growth is excellent. Company is really executing and seems to be holding on to its games that it's made during the pandemic. I think this has been banded about that this is a work from home stock. Absolutely not the case. I think the market is massively discounting the effect of which it's held on to these gains. Freelancing is here to stay. Flexible working is here to stay. And I think the num the percentage of workers f in working the freelance economy, doing side hustles and things like that, it's only going to grow over time. And you can see they're absolutely excellent and fantastically on these revenue numbers. Quarter 3, 2019, uh, 28 million in revenue quarterly. Quarter 3, 2021, 74 million in revenue. So in two years, They've basically tripled revenue, absolutely outstanding. Of course, when this company was a $300 stock, valuation got a bit carried away. It's now a more sensible number with the price sales around 11. This is not a profitable company, so PE is meaningless here. This is kind of a reasonable valuation, in my opinion, based on the fantastic year-over-year -year growth and the size of the opportunity in the addressable market. Enterprise value to free cash flow of 101. This is a cash flow positive business, but it's not doing enough. So that is a large enterprise value to free cash flow number. Again, it's not trying to be profitable in it. It's in the customer acquisition phase. So I'm not going to hurt it too much for that. So for me, at these prices, five is a buy. And I recently started a position of a company to back that up. I've had my eye on it for a while. And I really can't resist these prices. It's not a huge position, but I'm looking to add to it over time. The company has a really strong network, which will form a defensible moat. And that moat will only grow over time. I think there is already a moat. It has tons of room to grow with an incredibly large total addressable market, which I really can't overstate enough. It's already cash flow positive, has a lot of operating leverage in the future, attractive margins, and it's grown at 40% a year. This market is huge and in early stages relatively, 
tons and tons is still offline. This is the way the world is going to more freelancing, in my opinion. The main bear case for Fiverr, which of course I've not really mentioned, is competition. Upwork being the obvious, but there's going to be new competition from LinkedIn who announced they're getting into this space. These may cause problems, and Fiverr stock took quite a hit when LinkedIn announced they were going to be entering this market. I think the market is big enough for several players. Obviously, this is not going to be a winner-takes-all market, and I also think that Fiverr has the strongest offering and is the most attractive of all of them. I think it has the best brand. And as this network grows, this offering only gets stronger. Of course, LinkedIn has a strong brand, don't get me wrong, but LinkedIn is a relatively unknown quantity. The platform could come out and be absolutely garbage. And Fiverr is already has 4.1 million active active users, so I'm not so not so concerned about that. At just 3 billion market cap for this company, for me, it has the potential to 100x over the long term and is a candidate to 10x in the next 10 years, in my opinion. So I think this is borderline in the category of no-brainer. I'll be adding it to it over time. Of course, this is not financial advice, and if you want personalized financial advice, you should speak to a financial advisor. And with that, I'd ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks, bye.